Good rising, brethren. This is Big Judah coming to you guys from California. Before I begin, you know, all praise is the most high, Yahweh. Acknowledgement to the earthly mother. Who was wisdom? Who was the Holy Spirit? Acknowledgement to Yahweh Shai. I pray the most high blesses this lesson this evening, gives more knowledge and understanding of the events of the past. In order to understand events that are currently happening on the earth, so we get a much better understanding of the things that are soon to come on the earth. Before I begin, I want to thank all of the family for all of your support. I want to thank you uh, for supporting the channel, supporting myself and the family as we do the work of the Most High. Um, I also want to thank the people who are also the families that send in, uh, you know, links to videos and information. So we can bring that information out as well. May the Most High bless all of you that are helping myself as well as the other brethren in this truth. You know, that's how it's supposed to be. We're supposed to, you know, support and help the ones that the Most High has raised up, you know, to do this work. For far too long, the Gentiles and the other nations have exploited our, you know, our faith and our willingness to to help and everything else, because that's the way we have been built to work together, to support one another. They have exploited that for us to, you know, help them at their churches. You know, our people have always been the ones that have been volunteering all their time, giving all their money, sacrificing our children to them as well. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. We've been given 120% to whatever religious organization we've been a part of because that's in our nature. And I was reading some pretty heavy information in the sealed book. And I'm going to be uh, probably doing this video as well as maybe a couple of other ones today. And I might even do one on um, Patreon as well. So I'm gonna, I plan on being busy today. Um, because, I mean, these scriptures I was reading were just very heavy. And I'm going to read some right now because it just, it just, it struck a nerve. It just shows you how Satan is so deeply embedded in all walks of life here. And how they try so hard to make fake beefs with each other. Making it seem as if they're going against each other that one group is more godly than the other when they're all following Satan. Like we said, all religious institutions are following Satan. And we're going to play a little bit of this video right here that was shared with me, I want to say from Sister Kijuana. Thank you for sending this and sharing this with me so I could bring it out with the nation. We're going to be getting into this right now. But what we're talking about right here is the, the title, Did the Pope Just Confirm the Seven-Year Covenant? See, they're constantly trying their best to write themselves into prophecy. They're always got to try to, you know, interject their religion, their societies, their people into prophecy. All the while, they're ignoring those hidden prophecies about the knowledge uh, increasing among the true Israelites. That's the true um, main fulfillment of prophecy that is happening because the ones that are the most blessed of the children of the Most High are here now. They're here today. This is that chosen generation that has been getting... Um, fed and watching how the Most High has just been working in our lives. When you get this truth and you look back and you look at all the things that we've gone through and how the Most High has had his hands on our lives this entire time, it makes it very evident. You can see how the Most High has been preparing us for these days. How he's been preparing us for this time. And the other nations are just working so feverishly to make it seem as if 
No, 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 no. Those ones, those over there, those people over there, they have nothing to do with prophecy. It's all about us. It's all about our leadership. And see, that's not the case. But I want to talk about, you know, how, yes, we supported the churches. And this is why well, I'm going to read right now in a sealed portion, <clears throat> hit so close to home. <clears throat> Excuse me, because I felt like when I when I do things, I do them all out. So if I'm going to church and um, I'm taking I take all my kids to church, no one gets to stay home. No one gets to not participate. Everyone's going. When, you know, I would read the Bible when I first got into this truth, you know, we had some pushback, you know, uh, my wife wasn't really into it. Uh, my kids, you know, they're really younger, whatever else, but they're still more impressionable. So they were listening and everything else. I said, but I was like, even with my wife, okay, look, if you don't want to study this, then at least read your own Bible and study your own stuff. But we're all going to study at the same time. You know, I was the one that like, we have a pretty big family, my wife and, uh, and like her side of the family and everything else. And, you know, of all of the children, we were the ones that went to church consistently. We were the ones that took our kids to church consistently. We're the ones that had them in catechism classes. We're the ones that had them in first communion classes. My wife was the one that was in there teaching the catechism classes. That's just like the way I am and my wife is. And we're like, what if we're going to do it, we're going to go all in. So, you know, I was pretty proud. I felt like, you know, of all the kids or whatever else, you know, we were the ones that were doing things the right way. We were the ones that were going to church. We were the ones that were there consistently and everything else. So when you start reading about how all the religions are of the devil, that, you know, we understand, we understand that, you know, so, but you're going to see how Satan manipulates us in, in order for us to sacrifice our kids to him as well. We're going to read a little bit of that right now. Uh, I'm probably going to do a couple of videos on this section, I said, because it's just so much information. But I want to say it's the sealed portion, chapter 73. And we'll start at around 27. But what this is talking about before that is how, you know, we are experiencing temporary joy that we're getting from Satan because we want the things of this earth and that our children are watching us and our actions and how we get this temporary joy from these uh, temporary items that we get a new car, a new house, a new television, you know, going on a trip, things like that. And our kids, you know, we are the, their first teachers by our examples. So the things that we're doing and how we're getting all excited about that teaches our kids to do the same thing. But our kids don't realize, you know, how we're empty inside, how we're miserable inside. And we hide that from our children. And they just think that this is the way that life is. And that's the way that, you know, they're going to be. And that's the way that they should be. So let's read a little bit of, we'll start at uh, the sealed portion. Chapter 73, we'll start around verse 27. Yea, your children do not see that which is in your foreheads or the thoughts of your minds, even the mark of the beast that is in your foreheads and in your right hands. And the misery that comes from your pursuit of these things, they see not. Behold, they cannot see these things, for ye hide them from your children. And because they only see the temporary happiness that cometh from acquiring the things of the world, they do not understand the eternal peace and happiness that they are promised by their God, who is their Father in heaven. You know, I've never really been into making a bunch of money and, and stuff like that. That has not been like my driving force. So, like, so those kinds of things, you know, I didn't really push as far as, you know, with my children. But 
still, I, hey, if I got like something new, I'd be happy about that. If I got a new car, I'd be excited about that for a while, you know? And yeah, I didn't always talk to my kids about, you know, maybe how, maybe after a little while, that um, happiness fades. It's kind of things that you didn't talk to your kids about. You know, sometimes when you go to church and, you know, you don't feel like you're really getting fulfilled. You don't feel like, you feel like there's something more, but you don't talk to your kids about it. I, I, I was guilty of that because even when I was going to these churches, I never had any sense of full fulfillment. I always felt like something was missing. But with my kids, I was like, you know, well, I'd much rather than teach them something rather than nothing. Okay. But let's take it a little further now. Verse 29. This is that whole thing about taking, you know, is rather teach them something rather than nothing. And ye take them to your churches and teach them to listen to the leaders of your churches, whom ye present unto them as the mouthpieces of God on earth. This is huge. And I was guilty of this. And that's why this one shook me because I thought when I was going to church and teaching my kids and I was like one of the main ones of the family that was actually being consistent when, you know, a lot of my other, you know, brothers, uh, brother-in-law, sister-in-laws weren't doing the same thing. They weren't going to church and weren't teaching their kids anything. I had a sense of pride that, well, you know what? I'm teaching my kids something. I'm teaching them, you know, about the most high and, you know, I'm trying to get them to do the right thing so that later on they'll teach their kids to go to church and, and everything else. Man, Satan had me going to hell right there and leading my kids in that same direction, leading my wife in the same direction. And we're going to do a video later on because it goes deeper than just that. And without the Most High Sin and the Holy Spirit to open up my eyes through the death of my sister-in-law, I would have probably continued down that path. So again, this is verse 29. And ye take them to your churches and teach them to listen to the leaders of your churches, whom ye present unto them as the mouthpieces of God on earth. You know, call it, you know, you, you put that reverence on the pastor. Well, pastor said, whatever the pastor said, you're not even going to question. Or in a Catholic, you know, religion, you call them father. And you give them such reverence as if, you know, they are the mouthpiece of God here on earth. And you don't question anything that they say. Continue here on verse 30. And these leaders also are the successful and affluent men of the earth. As ye have taught your children that they should become. And they begin to do the things which ye teach them to do by your own example. And also by the example of those who ye claim are the examples of God upon the earth. So you got these successful men that you look at, you look up to. Successful women that, you know, you kind of have them aspire to be like. Thinking that they're somehow, you know, godly and blessed. And then you have, you introduce them to these pastors and priests and they pretty much mimic that same, you know, thought pattern. And you don't question anything they say because you presented them to your children as the mouthpieces of God on earth. Verse 31, behold, how many of you teach your children to pattern their lives after Christ and his teachings? Yea, how many of you teach? Oh, hold on. How many of you? Uh, <clears throat> hold on. How many of you teach these innocent ones who were happy in the beginning that Christ have given already unto them an example that they should follow in all things? And see, that's why it's pushed. To, these churches don't read the Bible. Don't study for yourself. We'll break it down to you. Don't read these books. Don't read this information. That's not canonized. That's not approved. Again, we read that again. Verse 31. Behold, how many of you teach your children to pattern their lives after Christ and his teachings? Yea, how many of you teach these innocent ones who were happy in the beginning that Christ hath given already unto them an example that they should follow in all things. And see, I was teaching my kids how to go to church, how to listen to the pastor, how to listen to the priest, 
how to listen to the nuns, how not to think for themselves, how not to question authority. I was guilty of all these things as well. Verse 32, Yea, there are many of you who say these things to your children, yet by your examples and the examples of the leaders of your churches, your children become confused and know not where to find the true example of the way in which they should live their lives. And that's exactly what has happened. Yahweh I did not own anything. He was not here for the temporary pleasures that Satan provided. He came to show us the example that we should be living by. He told the rich man, sell everything that you own and follow me. Because he knows that many have that spirit of Satan on them, and they can't give up the dainties that Satan has given them. Verse 33, but ye have the scriptures before you, and many of you proclaim to your children that the scriptures are the word of God, and that they should live by the scriptures, and do that which is commanded of them therein. Yet do ye live by the same words. I say unto you that ye do not, for ye are hypocrites, and do not read and understand the scriptures for yourselves. And because of your wickedness as parents, ye have offended the little ones of whom Christ spoke, when he said, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoso shall receive one such little child in my name receiveth me. But whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. There's a lot more that I want to talk about um, on this topic, and I'm going to continue with that probably in the next video, most high willing. But what I want to talk about here in this video, I'm going to show, show a little clip here, is how they know that the Catholic Church influences everything. That is the seat of Satan. But these Christian churches are just the hardens, even though they try to act as if they're somehow uh, broken apart, broken away, and, and they don't do the same things as a Catholic Church. See, we all were giving our kids over to Satan, no matter if you're going to a priest and, and, and you're presenting your kids to the priest and you need to follow everything the priest says and everything else and don't question him. And same thing with the pastors. All the pastor said, so whatever the pastor said, you got it, you have to do. Same thing. And it's, uh, you're going to see, I'm going to play a little bit of this clip here, but you're going to see how they... Um, We've been giving our children over to these people. We've been sacrificing our time, our resources, our hearts, our spirits, our souls, and our children to these organizations. When we present them in such high authority to our children, that's how we have sacrificed our children over to them. So that when we're not around them, they're able to influence our children to be willing participants in the society of Satan. And they grow up just fulfilling the cycle over and over and over again. It just gives a much deeper understanding about when the children will come back and say, that, like uh, Jeremiah and Jeremiah, that they have inherited lies. When the, uh, this, this uh, section right here really gets into that. It says, Jeremiah 16 and 19, O Lord, my strength and my fortress and my refuge. In the day of affliction, the Gentiles shall come unto thee from the ends of the earth and shall say, 
Surely our fathers have inherited lies, vanity, and things wherein there is no profit. Uh, this sealed portion really brings this out a lot more. <clears throat> and I want to definitely touch on that in a little bit. But I want to now talk here. I'm going to actually play this video here that the Pope just confirmed the seven year covenant. What is this guy's name? Ken Rag Raggio. Okay. I'll leave the link in the description box if you guys want to check out the video. We're just going to play a couple minutes of it here, though. A seven year clause in it. I've been watching for. I it's been probably 12 to 15 years. I've had Google alerts coming into my inbox on the subject of seven year agreement. I've had keywords like the Pope, the Vatican, seven year covenant agreement. I can't tell you how many thousands and thousands of emails I've got from Google alerts to warn me of articles and events that's been going on the last 15 years that might, I have never yet, not one single time, have I ever seen a document handed down from the Vatican that had that seven-year prerequisite. This is the first time in my life that I have seen the Vatican introduce a document with a seven-year plan. That's Now, if this is the first time he's seen it, why do you think all of a sudden the Vatican will be coming up with some kind of a document with a seven-year plan right now? Because we've already talked about this being the last three and a half years. And we know that this message is going out and people are it's resonating with the chosen. And even the people who are not chosen are still hearing this this information. They see the destruction is going on. But what are they always trying to make it seem like? Oh, we got more time. We got more time. Don't worry, guys. You don't want to worry about getting right with the most high right now. You got more time. Go drink and be merry and, and have uh, weddings and. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about, you know, the impending doom that's here. It's not here yet. The rapture hasn't happened yet. Antichrist hasn't shown up yet. See that? Keep partying. Keep praying to me. That's what Satan we, we, we're working on right now. That's why I think it has to be considered. All things considered. Guys, we're in the last generation. This is the 73rd year of the of the rebirth of Israel in modern times from 1948. This is a critical time in history. We are facing the end of this age. We are facing the second coming of Jesus Christ. We're looking in the face. We're looking square in the face, guys, of the mark of the beast. Tell me it's not time for the confirmation of the covenant. It is absolutely time for the confirmation. Is this it? I cannot say 100% unequivocally that this is the confirmation of the covenant. But I will venture to say that this is so keen to fulfill what that prophecy says. We are obliged. I'm obliged. I cannot ignore this covenant because it fits too easily into what I know the Bible said. That Prince of Rome will confirm a covenant with many for one week. Here we see this Laudato C action platform will focus on a seven-year plan to bring this climate change agenda into total fulfillment. Now, see, you know, they're ignoring all of the other times that they've already, you know, had these agreements. Dumb diversus. Doctrine of discovery. And the hundreds of millions, not billions of people that that's affected and killed and the transfer of wealth. See, that's why they got to make these proclamations now looking forward because you can't, they don't, they refuse to have you look backwards. They do not want you to look backwards and look at the things that they've already done and these agreements that they've already done and their actions that have already doomed them. Continue a little bit more. And it's going to be with families, parishes, schools, hospitals, businesses, organizations, and religious orders all over the world. But you say, well, it's just the Catholic Church. Guys, the Catholic Church does not ever work alone. Now, if you understand the Catholic Church has got probably a, a billion and a half adherents all around the world, 
that speaks for one fourth the world's population nearly. The Catholic Church is no small entity, but if you consider the the way that the Catholic Church has embedded itself at the United Nations, at every head of state and state department, you've got Jesuits and cardinals and archbishops that's working in every state house all over the world. They work in kings and, and, and parliaments and, and, and law chambers. They, they work in Congress halls. They work in non-governmental organizations. The Catholics are embedded in... You didn't have, they're not just working in the Catholic Church. They're working in all the politics of the world. Go go to Georgetown University in Washington, D.C. That's where most diplomats of all breeds go to receive diplomatic training, and it's run by the Jesuits of the Roman Catholic Church. Most of the diplomats in this world, including Middle Eastern diplomats, I'm talking about Saudi Arabian dip, diplomats, Jordanian diplomats, Iranian and Iraqi diplomats have trained, many of them have trained under Jesuit tutelage in global diplomacy. The Catholic Church, guys, come on, it virtually controls the world. Come on now. Bring it out. They're, bring, they're eating their own. Most High is making them expose themselves. Because, you know, he thinks that he's not part of that system. How could you be a, a pastor and not be a part of a system that he just admitted that the Catholics rule the world? So how could you think that somehow your churches are independent? They're not. They're not independent. Because he's right. The Catholic Church does run the world. When your heads of states are, you know, elected, and they got to go over there and kiss the ring. They're showing, they're showing who runs the world. Satan runs the world. We already know that. Earth is given to the hands of the wicked. So who are the wicked then? See how everything is backwards. Everything is backwards. You know? Hold on, we're fast. Job 9, 24. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covereth the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? They cover the faces of the true judges. They cover the faces of the Israelites. They put their own faces up as God to get the whole world to falsely praise them, give them worship, give Satan worship. And now they come up with these decrees, or they come up with these things. Oh, a seven-year document. Oh, this is it. Oh, we well, got the mark of the beast right now. This is it. Because you got to make it seem as if you know everything's happening right now, and you know that the, their, their actions before have nothing to do with what's going on right now. Now, just think: we were the we were, we have been, until now, giving our children over to these people, and it's been an endless cycle until the Most High awakened us here at the end and gave us back the two sticks in order for us to be able to follow the Most High independent of the Gentiles. Because we felt as if, you know, we were dependent upon them. And we were, because they were the ones that uh, had control. So we go to Romans 11 and 25. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. So now we've been given our children over to these uh, devils. And not until the Most High gave us the first and second stick were we able to shake off this blindness. And that brought the end of the, you know, the times of the Gentiles. And now the Most High is making them eat their own, making them expose each other. So, like I said, it's just, a, it's amazing. We're going to get much more information and much more understanding. And um, with these other books, and we just combine that with the information the Most High has already given us before. And it just makes uh, this truth that much more um enjoyable, understandable, and it's just absolutely amazing. All praise to the Most High, Yahweh. Acknowledgement to the Earthly Mother. Who is wisdom? 
who was the Holy Spirit. Acknowledge it. Yahweh Shai. Shalom.